Good afternoon. My name is Amir al Musa with ESAC Battelle. Thank you for joining this webinar titled, A Side-by-Side -side Comparison of an ACQM for Eligible Professionals and Eligible Clinicians Using Clinical Quality Language, or CQL. Today's session will be presented by Shanna Hartman from CMS and Bryn Rhodes uh, with ESAC Incorporated. Just a few administrative notes. Today's meeting is being recorded. Attendees are muted. At the end of the session, a feedback form will appear. Please take a few minutes and tell us how we did. We appreciate your feedback. Throughout the session, you can use the question and answer feature of WebEx to submit questions. A question and answer period will occur at the end of the session. I'd like, no I'd like to now turn it over to Shanna Hartman from CMS. Thank you. Thanks, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar for eligible professional and eligible clinician ECQM using CQL. After I provide a brief overview of CQL, I'll be passing the presentation off to Bryn Rhodes, who will be giving a walkthrough of two measures, CMS 68, Documentation of Current Medications in the Medical Record, and CMS 124, Cervical Cancer Screening, using the CQL expression and comparing the same measures logic using QDM. Next slide, please. CQL is a Health Level 7 International, HL7, standard and aims to unify the expression of logic for electronic clinical quality measures and clinical decision support. CQL provides the ability to better express logic-defining measure populations to improve the accuracy and clarity of eCQMs. Benefits of CQL are listed below. Improved expressivity, more precise and unambiguous, can share logic between measures, can share logic with decision support, can be used with multiple information data models, and simplifies calculation engine implementation. Next slide, please. As of November 2017, following more than one year of testing and input from the vendor and implementer communities, ECQMs in CMS quality programs will be transitioned to use the CQL standard for logic expression. The transition to reporting CQL-based measures will begin with the calendar year 2019 reporting period for eligible hospitals and critical access hospitals and calendar year 2019 performance period for eligible professionals and eligible clinicians participating in the following programs. The Hospital Inpatient Quality Reporting Program, or IQR, the Medicare Electronic Health Record EHR Incentive Program for eligible hospitals and critical access hospitals, the Medicaid EHR Incentive Program for eligible professionals, eligible hospitals and critical access hospitals, as well as the Quality Payment Program, the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, MIPS, and alternative payment models. To support this transition, CMS will be publishing CQL-based eCQMs in spring 2018. Next slide, please. This illustration is one of the ways to present the evolution of the current standard of the current standards using and creating the electronic specifications for the ECQMs. On the left, we have HQMS, which is the basic electronic specification for the measure. The quality data model, QDM, provides information to help finalize the HQMS and is divided into two parts, the data model and the logic. That is the current standard on the left through calendar year 2018. Now that we're moving to CQL, the HQMS will continue to provide the metadata and population structure, and the QDM will still provide the data model, but CQL will represent the logic used in the HQMS, depicted in the picture on the right beginning calendar year 2019. Next slide, please. This is a general timeline that CMS and our stakeholders are looking at through 2020. During this time, we will be creating eCQMs with CQL and have an expanded testing and development process of CQL and tools. As part of the education and outreach about CQL, we want to engage you all about the standard and we continue to incorporate the standard into the measures. Thank you, and I will now pass it on to Bryn to continue the presentation and provide a more in-depth review.
Thank you, Shanna. Um, can you hear me all right? Yes. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> I'd like to start uh, today by um, answering this question, what is uh, clinical quality language? Um, and to start this, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come at this from the perspective of quality measurement. And so uh, if you look at the current health quality measures format, normative specification, um, it defines a quality measure as a quantitative tool to assess performance related to a specific clinical process or outcome. <clears throat> so there are lots of lots of quality measures and lots of different kinds of quality measures that we've uh, that that have been used through these programs. Um, some of them are based on uh, current processes and and, and uh, chart abstracted measures. Um, we are focused here on electronic clinical quality measures, um, specifically those measures that we can represent. Um, in an electronic format that can be imported and as much as possible automatically computed uh, from the information available in, in the health information systems. So narrative descriptions of the quality measures are good, but electronic representations are better in that they more precisely describe the intent of the measure, both in terms of the data involved and the relationship and criteria defined for those data. So looking at CMS 68, um, the, uh, the description, um, it's a fairly straightforward description uh, involving percentage of visits for patients aged 18 years and older, uh, where the, the uh, eligible professional documents current medications. Um, so again, that's a narrative description. It's fairly broad, and there's a lot of information packed into that, a lot of information about context and um, process of care that are, that are going on. So to represent this electronically, we break this information down into different categories. Um, questions about the description, who said it, when did they say it, what evidence supports it. These are metadata. Um, questions about the content of the description, what kinds of things does it talk about? So it's talking about prescriptions, uh, it's talking about patient visits, uh, and what do those things look like? What, uh, what attributes and properties do medications have? Um, those questions we describe as, uh, or categorize as the, the data model, the things that are in the measure. Uh, and then what are the relationships between them? So a prescription uh, was documented at a patient visit. Um, what criteria apply to them? And this occurred at all the visits that, that happened during this measurement period. And those kinds of questions and relationships uh, we describe as the logic. <clears throat> so looking at these three categories of information uh, and thinking about how we represent this digitally, in the current specifications that we're using through calendar year 2018, uh, the health quality measures format is used to represent the metadata and then we use the quality data model version uh, 4.3 currently uh, to represent both the data model, the things that we talk about in the measure, and the logic, the relationships between those things. <clears throat> so what we've done is evolve the logic portion of the quality data model into a separate specification uh, called clinical quality language. HQMF in the new specifications beginning calendar year 2019 uh, is still used to represent the metadata. The quality data model is still used to represent the, the data model, the things that we're talking about. So throughout this presentation, uh, we'll use the term current specifications to refer to the current stack or QDM based uh, and the term new specifications or CQL based uh, to refer to the updated specifications, HQMF normative release, uh, clinical quality language, uh, ST release 2, and quality data model version 5.3. So just a brief overview of how we represent the data model. 
quality data model is a conceptual information model. Uh, so broadly speaking, it allows us to talk about uh, clinical statements. So the first uh, step there is to categorize those statements. So we, we can talk about things like laboratory tests and diagnostic studies. And then we can introduce a context where we can say, was it performed or was it ordered? So we can say a laboratory test was performed or medication was, was administered. And then we further refine that as a data element by binding it to a terminology like LOINC or SNOMED. Uh, so we can say uh, a particular kind of laboratory test was, was performed or a particular medication as identified by an RX norm code uh, was administered. Uh, and then finally, QDM defines the attributes that are available or the properties. So for a laboratory test, we may have the result uh, or for a location arrival time, uh, or sorry, for an encounter performed, we may have a location arrival time. So looking at, for example, encounter performed, this is the 5.3 QDM uh, version of encounter performed. These are the attributes then that are available uh, and a description from QDM of the kinds of data elements that, that would meet this criteria. Uh, so we can see we have things like the admission source and the diagnoses. Um, note that we have a relevant period, and this is different than the 4.3 version of encounter performed in that the relevant period is an interval value. So it has a start and a stop. And you'll see that kind of change throughout uh, the QDM 5.3 version. And the reason is that CQL supports direct interval operations. Uh, and so having them modeled as intervals makes uh, the expression of logic uh, simpler for some, for some comparisons. Note also, uh, there are plural attributes. So a diagnosis, an encounter performed, may have multiple diagnoses associated with it. And you can also uh, reference the ID. So you can talk about a specific instance of a data element. Um, and you can talk about the code, um, including the ability to use uh, direct reference codes from terminology. So we'll, we'll look more at that uh, later in the presentation. So then looking at the logic and how we, how we then represent that logic so it can be shared and distributed um, within QDM in the current version, uh, we specified the logic as part of the model. <clears throat> With CQL, we've broken that logic out into a separate specification. And by doing that, we can isolate the impact of changes to those specifications. For example, we can introduce new operations into the logic without having to change QDM. And we can introduce changes to QDM without having to change the logic specification. Uh, and in the same way that <clears throat> QDM is independent of the terminology, the logic specification can reference any terminology. So with that as kind of background, then we say that CQL is a standard language for expressing clinical knowledge um, that is readable. Uh, a domain expert should be able to, to look at and read and understand um, what, what a, a given CQL expression is saying. It's shareable and that it can be distributed uh, from machine to machine and understood. <clears throat> and it's computable in that a machine can understand the semantics of the expression uh, the meaning of the expression and uh, actually evaluate and, and calculate the measure um, without a developer having to build the logic to do that. Uh, so we'll start the measure tours. 
Um, these will be side-by-side -side reviews of current ECQM specification using 4.3 and the new ECQM specification using QDM 5.3 and clinical quality language. And as Shanna mentioned, we'll tour two measures, the CMS 68 um, and CMS 1.4. We'll just note that these draft ECQM specifications are not intended for submission uh, of 2017 or 2018 performance reporting programs. Updated ECQM information is available on the ECQI Resource Center website. So the first thing we'll look at is the measure package. Um, when you have the, the measure as an uh, the ECQM distributed, comes in a package that contains multiple files. For the QDM-based measure, we have the HTML, which is the human readable. That's the web page that you typically look at to, to see a, a description of the measure. And you have the .xml, which is the, the health quality measure format document. That's the actual machine readable version. And then you have simple XML, which is a um, simplified version of that of the logic involved <clears throat> that's intended to, to um, help implementers. For the CQL base, we still have the human readable. Uh, that's the HTML. We'll look at some examples of those. Then the uh, the XML, the HTML document, is still present, but the logic portions are um, referenced from the HTML and they point to expressions that are defined in the CQL uh, and the expression logical model, which is the machine readable rendering uh, analogous to the simple XML from, from the previous specifications. Uh, and we make those machine readable specifications available in both XML and JSON. Note that <clears throat> CQL also includes a libraries feature so that measure logic can be shared between measures. And when a measure uses libraries, uh, it will include the CQL and ELM artifacts uh, for all the libraries that it references. Um, another note that file naming conventions uh, within these measure packages are still being finalized. Uh, those will be posted to the ECI Resource Center once they are available. So they may not look exactly like that, but they will be uh, generally those are the uh, files that will be available in a measure package. So looking at the human readable, um, the metadata for the measure uh, is largely the same between the current specifications and the new. Um, there are very, very few changes uh, in the metadata. For the measure contents, uh, we have in the QDM based the population criteria and that, um, the data criteria, supplemental data, and, and risk adjustment. For the CQL based, we still have the population criteria. And we'll look at we'll look at that next. Um, but the data criteria section is now a definition section uh, that contains the expression definitions that are used throughout the measure a function section that, that contains any, um, any functions that are defined and used by the measure, uh, and then a terminology section that, that captures all of the terminology referenced throughout the measure, whether it's uh, within a data criteria or uh, by, bound to an attribute comparison uh, or direct reference codes. Um, the data criteria section is, is uh, largely the same. Uh, and then there are some changes to the supplemental data elements and risk adjustment variables um, that allow us to, to express those more um, flexibly, and we will look at those. <clears throat> so this is side by side of the QDM based and the CQL based for this measure uh, for the population criteria. So you can see they have the same kinds of populations. Uh, we, we didn't change anything about that. That's still specified by uh, HQMF. Um, so for each kind of measure, you have uh, the appropriate um, populations specified. 
uh, initial population, denominator, and so on. Uh, the human readable note has some new formatting uh, and some new features like collapse and expand. And you'll also see some new constructs uh, like this function, an aging years at, where, uh, where we use parentheses uh, to denote a function. Um, you'll see expression definitions, so uh, encounters during measurement period. Um, and you'll also see queries, so uh, the use of aliases like uh, encounter here. And we will dig more into those in subsequent slides. So this is the uh, declaration section for the CQL library for this measure. Provides the name of the library and the version of it. Um, it says what what data model we're using. In this case, QDM. Uh, all of the all of the measures in this particular uh, program will use QDM version 5.3. Uh, and then it lists the value sets uh, involved. Uh, you can also see the parameter measurement period. This is so the logic can can uh, reference the measurement period. Um, and uh, parameter is expected to be provided as part of uh, the reporting execution. And then you can see the context of patient, uh, meaning that all the expressions in this library will be um, written from the patient perspective, from the, from the perspective of a single patient. So digging into the initial population, uh, comparing the QDM-based and the CQL-based, you can see encounters during measurement period is a reference to um, an expression definition. We'll look at that more uh, on the next slide. Um, we also use, uh, uh, we introduce comparisons um, and the, the same types of comparisons that you, you'd expect to see. Um, and you can see it's quite similar in terms of the um, general description of that initial population. Note that this uh, returns a list of encounters, not a yes or no. This is typical of episode of care or encounter-based measures. Um, where the measure, the members of the measure, the members of the population are actually encounters rather than patients. Um, so in this case, the description of the measure begins with percentage of visits, as opposed to a patient-based measure description that would begin with percentage of patients. So this is a, a, an example of the types of expressions you can you can use within CQL. Um, you can You'll see logical expressions. Um, I can say A and B are both true. Um, I can perform comparisons uh, of, of values like numbers and strings. And I can perform uh, arithmetic. Um, note that the uh, order of precedence that you'd expect applies. So this A plus B times C, for example, um, will be evaluated as B times C and then uh, plus A. In the, in the standard mathematical um, approach. So <clears throat> digging deeper then into encounters during measurement, um, the QDM-based representation of this is the current day of encounter performed in the medications encounter code set uh, during the measurement period. The CQL-based um, is very similar. We just say encounter performed in the medications encounter code set. Uh, and we use a query to introduce this encounter alias and that allows us to talk about the relevant period of the encounter and say that it's during the measurement period. We'll look at, uh, we'll look at that a little bit more later. And this slide, we want to point out that um, in CQL, specific occurrences are no longer required because we just reference the expression definition that identifies the instance we want to talk about. Uh, and so wherever we need to reference that, then we use that expression, that same expression definition. So digging deeper into 
the actual data elements here, and counterperformed medications and counter code set. This is uh, the same as the data criteria from uh, the current QDM. But within CQL, you'll see it delimited using uh, the square brackets. So anytime you see the square brackets uh, around um, a data type name like this, uh, you know that what we're doing is actually asking the, the information system uh, for that data. And there are two components of that data criteria. The first is the type. So based on the data model that we're using, we specify a particular type and counterperformed in this case. And then uh, the second part of that is the value set or the terminology. Uh, in this case, it's a reference to a value set. Um, but CQL does allow you to specify a direct reference code there, or you can just use a single code from a terminology. So the result then of this retrieve is the set of data elements of that type uh, that have a code that matches the terminology. So coming back out to the encounters during the measurement period, um, this is, again, a set of encounters as opposed to a yes-no. And so if we want to combine sets of encounters, we use intersect and union. Um, you've seen those in, in the QDM logic. Um, but this is as opposed to criteria, true or false, which are combined with the logical operators and and or. Um, this is also a query, so digging into that a little bit. The query is introduced with this encounter alias right after the retrieve. And what that does is provide an identifier that we can use to then reference the data elements that come back from this retrieve. So you can think of this as saying, for every encounter performed in the medications encounter code set, test whether the relevant period of that encounter is during the measurement period and only return that encounter if that test is true. So <clears throat> digging into that where clause just a little further, the property that we're able to access here is defined by the quality data model. So the fact that we can say relevant period here is because quality data model says that encounters performed have a relevant period property. And note that we said that that was interval valued, meaning that the relevant period has a start and a stop. And because it's an interval, we can use an interval operation during uh, to compare it to the measurement period, which is also an interval from the start of the year to the end of the year. There are other other timing operations we can we can perform with CQL, so we'll dig a little bit into those. <clears throat> Specifically, we can perform comparisons between uh, two date time values. So I can ask if the author date time is less than uh, the author date time of an assessment. Um, I can also ask if a date time value uh, is during an interval. Um, I can also compare intervals with the date time. So I can ask whether this interval of the relevant period uh, includes uh, an author date time assessment. And I can also compare interval uh, two intervals directly um, as, as we saw in the encounters during measurement period. And this says that this relevant period interval is entirely included in this measurement period interval. Other examples of, of timing and intervals that you'll see in CQL are uh, one, the full set from QDM. So you can say things like starts before start, um, and those will be um, familiar from uh, the QDM logic. Uh, you can also use timing phrases. So I can say starts three days before start or starts within three days of the start. And then uh, there are direct interval comparison operators. So in addition to during, we can say things like meets and overlaps. 
could also access the, the boundaries of the start or the end of an interval. Um, and you can also do membership testing with the in. So I can ask if some value is in an interval. Um, and note that it is possible to represent um, integer intervals or decimal intervals or even quantity intervals within uh, CQL. So then looking at the numerator, uh, again, then the result of the numerator expression here uh, is a list of encounters. Um, so because this is an encounter-based measure, all of the top level population criteria um, I have to return a list of encounters. Note, we're still evaluating the patient context. So this expression is written from the perspective of a single patient. And this is different from QDM in that the return type is important because it informs how the expression can be used later on. Um, in QDM, the return type was not as clear. So looking at the denominator exceptions for this measure, uh, again, we start with encounters during measurement period. So rather than using occurrence A like we do in the QDM here, we start with the same set of measures that we use to define um, the initial population and the, and the denominator. Uh, and then we use a, a with, um, which is a way within CQL to define the relationship between two sources. So uh, this is saying the encounters during the measurement period uh, with medications not documented for medical reason. So this is a reference to another definition, such that the meds author date time is during the encounter's relevant period. So again, we're using in the medications not documented for medical reason, uh, a retrieve of procedures not performed in current medications documented SNOMED value set. This is different than the way that um, negation was represented in QDM. In QDM, we said procedure performed, not done for medical or other reason for current medications documented. Um, for consistency with the other procedure performed with the positive expressions, um, we use the same approach. We just include the, the modifier not, so you see procedure not performed uh, in, the, in the value set. And then we use the negation rationale attribute of that procedure uh, to indicate medical or other reason not done. So looking at the data criteria section, um, in the QDM based, we specify all the data criteria. In the CQL based, we do the same, except we also include uh, data criteria that are used in defining supplemental data elements. And we'll look at those a little bit later. Note that um, the QDM based, um, there were uses of attributes. Uh, those are no longer referenced in the data criteria sections. So if you've seen those in the QDM, those are referenced in the terminology section, which is only present in CQL. And this contains all of the value sets that are referenced by the measure, as well as any direct reference codes. So for example, the medical or other reason not done value set um, is only referenced within the logic. It's not referenced in a data criteria. So it shows up in this terminology section to make sure that we have a complete picture in the human readable of the terminology that is referenced by the measure. So looking at the supplemental data section, um, 
as we mentioned, we include the data criteria uh, in the data criteria section. And then in the supplemental data, we reference expressions just like we do with all of the other uh, population criteria. And this allows us to be more flexible about how we define what the supplemental data is for a measure. So these can be a, uh, any expression then um, it gives us more flexibility in collecting additional information with the measure itself. And risk adjustment variables use the same mechanism. So we can uh, use expressions and uh, all the flexibility of CQL to describe what risk factors are associated with the measure and how those should be gathered. So then <clears throat> looking at CMS-124, so this one is a patient-based measure versus an encounter-based. Uh, and this is evident from the description of the measure where the uh, patient-based CMS-124 says percentage of women 21 to 64 years of age who are screened, whereas the encounter base has percentage of visits for patients 18 or older for which the eligible professional attests. So we're changing how we calculate the percentage, and that's reflected in the return type of the expressions used. So in the QDM based, we defined uh, the demographics and then um, made sure that we had an encounter, a qualifying encounter during the measurement period. So in the CQL based version of that, we, we break those up into uh, a yes, no for are they in the demographics? And that uses the age and years act and the uh, um, patient characteristic female. And then we define a, a valid encounters that is the union of all of those um, encounters performed. And then ensure that those are all during the measurement period. So again, this is these are all returning uh, at the initial population. Uh, this is returning a yes, no rather than a list of encounters. So for the exclusions for this measure, um, we're looking for the uh, evidence of hospice. So in the encounter inpatient, we have the discharge status uh, in discharge to home for hospice. Uh, or we're looking for interventions ordered or performed during that that overlap the measurement period um, for hospice care. So <clears throat> this is the, the CQL expression of that. And you'll notice this denom exclude uh, hospice exclusions. What this means is this is a library expression. So this expression of hospice exclusions is then used across different measures and is included here um, by the use of a, li a library. Uh, you can also see um, the comparison of a discharge disposition. So we can say the encounters performed um, where their discharge disposition is in this value set or that value set, uh, and that they end during the measurement period or that there are uh, hospice care ambulatory intervention orders during or ambulatory uh, interventions performed overlapping the measurement period. Uh, and then we define a hysterectomy procedure. And we combine those because hospice exclusions is a yes, no. Um, and a hysterectomy procedure is returning a list of procedures. Combine that using uh, and exists to say, are there any hysterectomy procedures? Yes or no? And then we can combine that logic. So measure libraries then allow these definitions 
to be shared among measures using libraries. So the hospice library defines its exclusions. Um, and rather than in QDM where we had to uh, duplicate that, that logic between each different measure, uh, we can now share that. Um, and note again that measure packages will include the artifacts or any libraries that they referenced. So looking at the numerator for this one, that's the QDM representation. And note that it, we, we have to express it in terms of uh, the data criteria and specific occurrences. Um, and you can, you can parse out from this what, what's going on. Um, in the CQL based version, we use the expression definitions to actually name those results so that it's clear what the intent of each expression is actually looking for. So the numerator then reads, exists a PAP test within three years or exists a PAP test with HPV within five years. And then we can dig into what those expressions actually look like, PAP test with results where the relevant period is three years or less before the end of the measurement period. And PAP test result with results is then defined as a laboratory test performed in the PAP test value set that has a lab test result. And the same with HPV within five years. That's a PAP test with results with an HPV test with results such that the APV test starts within one day of the start of the PAP test. And the patient's age at the start of the PAP test is over, is 30 or over. And the PAP test is five years or less before the end of the measurement period. So uh, this is a, a set of available resources. Um, CQL specification itself is available from HL7 at that link. CQL-based HTMFIG, which provides uh, implementation guidance for how to use uh, CQL and HTMF together with QDM to represent electronic uh, clinical quality measures. And the ACQI Resource Center, a one-stop shop uh, for the most current resources to support electronic clinical quality improvement. You can find current versions of the QDM specification, uh, as well as uh, CQL-related tools and resources uh, and educational events. Um, some further tools that are available, there's a CQL formatting and usage wiki. Um, this has content uh, that um, there are Q&As, uh, there are uh, discussion topics and um, content that's been developed throughout the process of, of uh, transitioning. There are also tools repositories uh, for implementers. Um, as well as the measure authoring tool and the body testing tool. And to submit issues uh, for CQL visits, uh, the ONC project tracking JIRA site. So at this point, we will start looking at questions. <laughs> 